Okay, welcome back for video three in the series where we're building this reporting software using Entity Framework and SQL Server. Uh, we're going to talk in this video about building the uh, test project for the Entity Framework model project we did in video two. I know that some people will say, well, you know, you built it on the Entity Framework, Microsoft's bulletproof, blah, 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 and... Uh, well, this is a good time before we put the business layer in there to put together a model project and a test project and show you how to easily do that. So I don't trust anyone just right off the bat, and I don't trust Microsoft right off the bat that everything's going to work the way I want it. So it's a good way to test your model, make sure it's going to work the way you think it is. So what we've done is, as you'll remember from the last video, we built the model, and I have added to the solution, which is in the comments how to get it. Uh, I've added a status report dot test project. And the way I did that is I just right clicked on the solution. I went to add new item or new I'm sorry new project. And then I went down here to test and a unit test project. And I just named it status report dot test. When it came up I added to it two classes a person test and a report entry test. Let's take a look at those. The person test class, uh, well, wait a minute, let me back up a step. We need to add, because we're not truly tore away from the entity framework yet, uh, we haven't put that business uh, layer in there to really granularize this thing. So we still got to use the entity framework. So first go to right click on your test project, manage NuGet packages, and go get, go get uh, entity framework. Make sure online and nuget.org is selected, entity framework, click install and go. The other thing you're going to want to do is add references. You're going to right click, go to add reference, and you're going to add a reference to system.data and system.data.link. Okay, so add those two references. And then you'll notice that I'm not using their unit test class default definitions up here on my usings, I'm using a little custom where I'm including the framework and the link in here. So that's something worth noting. But everything else, test class, test method, is, is the same. And I'm only testing uh, basic CRUD stuff. And so I'm going to go down there and give us a little more screen space here. But you'll see I'm testing the add person. I simply using the status entities context from my entity framework, which this comes right from the entity frameworks in the using status.entity framework. I create a new person, and I've, I've done this two different ways. If you look at the person object, I create a new person this way. If you look at the uh, report entry object, I'll show you how I did it different. And you'll say, well, why did you why did you do person test and then you call a function name test add person. Isn't that a bit redundant? I'm going to show you why I don't just put test add. It, there's a very good reason for not doing that. And it's when we run the tests themselves. So what we do is we create a context. We add the person object. Or we create the person object. We add all the data to it. And then we add it to the context. Really easy. And then we check the number of records affected by the save. And then we assert if it's true the records are greater than zero. Simple, simple stuff. Nothing to it. On the fetch, we're just going to go out and we're going to do some link. We're going to go and check where it's, uh, I could have used a string where it's case invariant, but I like to keep it mid-level so that it's easy to understand. You can see that it's here, first or default, where last name is Bortel, and I'm just grabbing the first or default, and I just make sure it's not null. That means we got it. I happen to know from running the test that number three primary key is in there. And that comes into play on this delete. We're going to go through and we're going to say, look, delete all the new people we've added whose ID is greater than three. And their last name is Bortel. And we use the new for 6.02 or 6.0, I guess, the right remove and add range list. So we do the same thing there for the count. Pretty easy stuff. Now we're going to go over to the report entry class. 
And here you'll notice I did it different. This is where I created the class different, uh, newer, fancier, whatever. Uh, it still does the same thing. Um, I create the context. I have to create the person object here because I want to make sure that my model is working the way I think it is. We're going to expose the model as like an API. So what that means is, is the person, in order to get to their report entries, we're going to go through the person object to do that. Because a manager will have a list of people that works for him or her, and then it's going to say, look, for that person, get their report entries. For the next person, get their report entries. For the next person, get their report entries. So when we add them, we're going to need to know the foreign key for the person. And when we get them, we're going to need to know the foreign key uh, for the person. It just so happens with, with uh, Entity Framework we're able to do that through the relationship which I'll show you. So in order to add a child object you just use your same context. We go to the person which is out of scope for the entry but we get I know it's number three but I made it generic enough so this test wouldn't fail if you accidentally delete number three. Uh, we just grab any Bortel in there. Uh, don't delete number three because I was wrong it will fail don't delete number three and because the delete statement in the first test will delete them all that are greater than number three so um, I grab the first person you can add different people with different names to tinker with it and then I say look I'm gonna create a report entry and you'll notice here I just did the report entry uh, the double parentheses and then a uh, bracket and I set each parameter here. Now I did not set every parameter for the report entry. Uh, if we look at the model, there's a lot more report entry properties, but they're nullable. And so what I did was I sent a few of them, but I didn't send them all. I sent a couple of the nullable ones to make sure they set because I want to test to make sure that we can enter a report entry when that nullable field is null. So we don't want to set everything in our test and go just the happy path. We want to mix it up a little. And then I do uh, p.report.entries.add r and I set the count equal to the context.save changes and I'm going to check two things here. Number one is that we actually added records and number two is that the primary key for the child record, the report entry record that its ID got set to a value greater than zero meaning it got inserted the entity framework said okay I added you what primary key are you now so it's going to be greater than zero so that's the two things I'm checking to make sure that the insert works for the fetch it's pretty simple uh, some would say too, too simple but not really and remember it's going to run these in order from top to bottom so you can assume that. So the fetch, it's going to say, look, go get a person and get a Boolean value if they have any entries. Well, we happen to know that we just added an entry for Bortel, so the any should be true. That person named Bortel should have an entry or entries. Oops, up here. Sorry. <laughs> that should have an it should have an entry or two or three or depends on if you you know you can go up here and you can right click a single test and run that test or you can run them all. Um, in the delete entries, this is where you've got to be careful. This is actually where it gets a little bit weird because it functions different than the add. You'll remember on the add we added the entries to the person object. Well, on the delete you don't do that. What we do is we go out there and we get the person and then we look and see if they have any entries and if they do we go get their whole list of entries because I'm just going to delete them all and then we say the context.report entries dot remove range the list you don't remove the child objects from the person because you would think well Dean why don't you do p dot report entry dot remove this list it doesn't work like that. Uh, I tried it. I actually tried to do a for each loop and actually iterate through it and say, look, for each of the report entry in the list, remove it and then at the end save it and it throws an invalid uh, operation exception. Uh, 
didn't expose you to that here on video, didn't feel like punishing you. So just trust me that use the report entries in your context, remove the range that is the list, even though we know it's a child list of this person uh, object, remove it from the main context and it will work. Okay? So to prove it, let's take a look here and I'm going to go here to my database and it wants to know the passwords password one dollar sign go ahead and save it tables so person I'm gonna show the data and on the report entry I'm gonna show the data and there won't be any because the tests have worked they've deleted them all so what do we expect to see after this runs? Well, really nothing different, right? Because we're going to add a person, we're going to update the person, then we're going to delete the person, but we're doing some condition checks to make sure it actually really did do it, so the report outputs will tell us whether or not the test passed. Same thing with entries. We're going to add and we're going to delete, so we're not going to end up with anything different. After the test run, we're going to still have one entry in here and no report entries. I don't know why I just got rid of that. I'm going to need it. Uh, show table data. All right, so let's go over here and let's go to our status report test. And you've got a uh, test explorer tab over here if you look on your left. And I'm going to say run all tests. And it's going to run the person first and it's going to run the entry second. And then I'm going to show you an, an interesting thing with with uh, Entity Framework. Okay, now you can see that what it did was it ran all the tests, and this is why I add person and entry to the end of the function calls because it doesn't give you the object and then the functions under it. It gives you the functions that it runs. So I always put the name of the object at the end of it. That's why I do that. And you'll notice that there's one in here, person, where it took a second to run. You're like, oh my gosh, Dean, that's a terribly slow uh, insert. And that's not true. That's Entity Framework spooling up. Uh, the first test that it ran was person test dot add person. So it took the longest amount of time. Okay? All right. And we see that all of them passed. So if we go in here and let me see something. I don't want to do any of that. You can go to your tests and do other things and, and do all of that. You can go to your output and you can see where it built it and look at things like that, but we really don't care. No errors. And here we've got no uh, data tool output. So that's it. That's how you do a basic testing project and run tests against your data uh, layer, in this case, the entity framework. So if you have any questions, send them to me, uh, deanbortel at gmail.com. Uh, send them through the YouTube channel is the best way to do it. Just send me a message. I do ask that you please subscribe. Check out my other videos. There's links to them, or Texas Lake House being the main channel. And as always, thanks for stopping by.